So you were saying earlier about like you, you know you got your family and that now. Um, that's something that you know going forward is like there's I don't feel there's like a lot of information out there about like the family sort of side of it. Mm-hmm. When somebody sees somebody in a wheelchair, normally they just assume that they're a single person that yeah. doesn't have any life, you know, relationship yeah. life and that. So, yeah, um, especially someone who's young they, and they've just had their injury, they might be like, oh, why would anybody want to be with me sort yeah. of thing. So I feel like, yeah, talking about that sort of stuff would be really helpful to people. Okay. Um, well, after I had my injury, I, I didn't find it too hard. Um going back into the world and sort of, I don't know, being confident about, you know, meeting girls and stuff like that. I, um, within a few years, I, I felt fairly confident in my wheelchair. And in fact, you know, I used my crutches quite a lot to begin with when I left hospital. And I actually found that um, it's a bit more disabling actually being on crutches sometimes. And I think a lot of people uh, don't really understand, they don't get it, people who are able-bodied see a wheelchair as very much being um something you want to get out of you know yeah. and and if there, there's a possibility that you could walk a few steps with crutches that that would be the preferred option uh, and that's what my mindset was for even for quite a few years after um leaving hospital and it takes a while to realize that actually you're more certainly for my level of ability of walking um you're much more disabled on your crutches than you are in a wheelchair because you, yeah you can't go fast, you can't carry things, you can't like be spontaneous, you can't go go around. And there are restrictions on wheelchairs, obviously, you know, the, yeah. t- the terrain that you're going on. But in general, um, it's a lot easier and a lot more sociable and easy to be around people yeah. in a chair. Um, so I've sort of found that after I sort of realised that, I didn't feel, I don't know, I think you you're a similar person after your injury as you are before and it does yeah. affect you but once you sort of get your head around what's happened you become a similar person to who you were before yeah. the injury um, so I didn't really have any major embarrassment or or like kind of I didn't feel restricted at talking to girls and meeting girls and stuff like yeah. that um, yeah, I was interested in what you were saying about like the wheelchair and that. I always try and say to people, it, I'm not like bound to the wheelchair. The wheelchair enables me to do yeah, things. Yeah. Like it's a great thing that I have a wheelchair because yeah. if I didn't have one, mm. I wouldn't be able to do a half. Well, I wouldn't be able to do anything. But yeah. at least I can bed all day. So yes, which is exactly what they used to do with spinal injury people. Yeah. initially they just stuck them in a bed and left them. Wait till them to die basically. Yeah, exactly. So a wheelchair is actually an amazing thing that yeah. allows you know so many possibilities and that yeah, so, very much so it's it's quite good to get that point across to people and like yeah. you know once the name once they understand that that's quite good especially yeah. if you've got like a group of friends and they understand that and then if you're going out with them and doing yeah. things they can sort of not like protect you or anything but like they can be there to be you know yeah people need to understand that we do have limitations yeah but that we still want to take part in as much of the stuff as we can yeah um, and I think that's yeah it's just about people that you know being able to help you overcome those limitations but not sort of modicum you this so that you you can't you're not being involved with stuff yeah they sort of like push you to be a bit, like mm. a better person which yeah. is like the sort of friends you want exactly yeah. around you yeah. especially in those early days yeah yeah but yeah like you said we was talking about like the relationship side mm. of it yeah, yeah like, it's again for myself um I never found there was like an issue talking to girls or that and never really had an issue with them talking to me back either. Yeah. Um, you get some that are, you know, a drunk girl that's, you know, yeah. a bit too drunk and she wants to sit on your lap and yeah. that and it's a bit like, I don't yeah. really want this right now. But Take it or leave it, depending, yeah. What's yeah, yeah. depending on the situation. You're young, free and single and uh, <laughs> yeah. you've got a hot girl wanting to sit on your lap, you know, you just <laughs> decide whether you're like, yeah, I'll go for that. Or, <laughs> yeah, or exactly. that's not what you want. But, um, yeah, it's, it's quite... Um, Obviously, it's a bit different. You know, I found that I had a lot more girls approaching me rather than me yeah. having to approach girls. Yeah. So, um, but I always say that it's a really good sort of filter for people, the wheelchair. Like, Very much I wouldn't want to date somebody that wouldn't want to date someone because they're in a wheelchair anyway. Mm-hmm. So being in a wheelchair means that yeah, you, you actually... those people already. Those people are already gone. All yeah. the, you know, pretentious yeah. and, you know, shallow people. They're sort of, yeah. you know, they all, they're already filtered out. And yeah. generally, I feel like... Because you met, 
um, Joe, your wife, after your injury. Yes. And it seems that, like, there are some people that get injured and they have relationships that fail, and that mm. seems to be more common than yeah. somebody who finds someone after their injury, and yeah. that seems to be, you know, it's different in every circumstance. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, what was like? How did you meet Joe, and how was that? How did that all come apart? Well, um, I've lived in some quite interesting houses. I've been always involved in like doing big house parties and things and um, the sort of social scene and stuff. So um, after I graduated um, from my engineering degree, I stayed around in the area where my university is. Um, so I kind of ended up living in houses uh, with lots of other graduates. Um, and after a, a few years, I ended up living in a house of 13 people. So massive, it used to be an old people's home. Uh, but it was sort of turned into student accommodation or graduate accommodation uh, and there was 13 bedrooms and 13 people uh, and we used to have absolutely massive house parties and like <laughs> hundreds of people in our house particularly when I was running a club night and yeah. people knew about that um, so we had some huge parties uh, and I think I'd been living in that house for two years and then uh, somebody moved out across the corridor from me and Joe moved in um, and within about six months we had sort of started seeing each other oh, that's nice, so, yeah. but it was easy just you know I just used to talk to her when she came home from work and um, just got to know her that way and then um, yeah we got closer and closer and uh, yeah it's been us for I should know this we got married in 2010 <laughs> so uh, she can eight, skip this bit yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so eight and a half years we've been married and been seeing each other for a few years before that that's lovely. Yeah, it's it's good to that that you know, like another say she met you in another way. I don't know how it would have worked, but the fact she got to know you as a person and that, and I just didn't see the wheelchair and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, it's no, we just I, I think that's the way that relationships happen best if you sort of get to know people as a friend and then yeah, exactly, and that's into more. That's just the same as that well, doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair or not. Yeah. So it's you know like that the wheelchair doesn't really affect the situation at all yeah. which is quite important for people I think to, to they find out on themselves but knowing mm. that the wheelchair isn't the be all and end all of everything that controls their life you know yeah, it's just the same so. yeah. yeah there's not really much difference yeah and I mean there will be people who it becomes an issue for um, I remember when Joe told me that her she's a, a primary school teacher or she was um her headmistress came, took her aside and said, you know, are you sure you want to be dating this guy in a wheelchair? He's going to really limit your, you know, prospects for the future and stuff like that. And she was really offended by it. And yeah, that, you know, I imagine. Which, this she was, to be honest, a rubbish head teacher. Right? Yes, yeah, that's uh, not a good person. She was very it. negative on disability in general, um, which was a bit of a frustration. But, um, you know, there will always be people, people out there who see an issue with it. Yeah, um, I think generally those people that see the issue, it's not because it's more about the ignorance of it like they yeah. don't understand the situation they don't understand you they don't understand yeah, yeah. what you can do they just see a wheelchair and they're like oh yeah and especially somebody from an older generation yeah. because yeah. when they grew up they didn't see disabled people around because no, they I, were I, stuck in an old person's home or something so yeah.